Hey guys, thanks for watching the Qin Dynasty. It's Mike Chen. Every country has its own history, filled with great people long gone and ancient knowledge forgotten in time. But as we humans desire to be remembered, we use our abilities to create objects, objects that we can leave behind for the next generation to remember us by and be reminded of the life that we have lived. Those artifacts displaced from their own time become stuff of legends. And perhaps out of the many artifacts that are discovered by modern day historians and archaeologists, Weapons are probably the ones that not only carry a story with them, but an epic one at that. Weapons represent the level of advancement in a society and they show the power of a country. The quality of weapons determine an army's competence in battle, and China is a good example of how skill in weapon making can enable a nation to become a major military power. Because of its advanced weapons, China became a force to reckon with in East Asia during the medieval period. So it's no stretch of imagination that in a country with countless battles fought, there are bound to have been great stories still talked about until today about the warriors who lived and the swords that were used. So here are five of those legendary swords in Chinese history. Number one, the Yuchang Sword. This sword was owned by Prince Guang, who was a general in the state of Wu during ancient China's spring and autumn period. This was a time where the country was composed of kingdoms of various sizes that fought with each other constantly. Guang came into power after he had King Lao, his cousin, assassinated. According to history, the assassin Zhuan Zhu hid a sword in the king's roasted fish. Zhu was brave enough to draw the sword and plunge it into the heart of the king, piercing his layers of armor in front of all his guards. The success of the assassination gave the sword its reputation of being the sword of bravery, and it was forever associated with Guang, who became the king. Number two and three, one of my favorite Chinese stories, the Ganjiang and Moye swords. These swords, dubbed the swords of love, were made by two of the most famous swordsmiths in all of Chinese history, Ganjiang and Mo Ye. According to legend, around 494 BC, King He Liu, who we were just talking about, who ruled the state of Wu in ancient kingdom in historical China, received three exquisite swords as a gift of surrender from King Gou Jian of Yue. The swords were so magnificently made that he commissioned the same swordsmith couple, Ganjiang and Mo Ye, to make him his own sword. The couple complied with the king's command, and as they forged the two swords, they instilled in them the essence of yin and yang. However, they ran into a problem while making the swords, and Gan Xiang, recalling his training, realized that the yin and the yang essence were not balanced, so he and his wife Mo Ye added some of their own male-female essence into the forge. This then balanced the yin and yang and solved the entire problem. The swords turned out perfectly. The yang sword, which Gan Jian named after himself, had a turtle shell pattern, while the yin sword, named after his wife Mo Ye, had an eel skin pattern. When Gan Jian faced the king, he only presented the Mo Ye sword and kept the Gan Jiang for himself. The king, oblivious that there had been another sword, was pleased. But after some time, the king found out about the other sword. Angered at the betrayal, he ordered Gan Jiang killed. But just as the swordsmith was slain, suddenly the Mo Ye sword turned into a dragon, disappearing along with the Gan Jiang sword. Ever since then, the legend was born of the two swords that was made by lovers who were separated by death but reunited and survived survived by their swords that remained together till the end of time. Number 4, the Zhan Lu Sword. This sword was made by yet another famous sword maker in Chinese history named Ou Yezi. The sword was said to shine so bright that even celestial bodies paled in comparison to its glow. Made of the essence of all metals, it was a strong and sharp sword, so sharp that according to legend, if it was ever dipped in water, it would actually come up dry. Ou Yezi had long dreamed of making a sword that was unequal in strength but displayed a non-threatening appearance and the Zhan Lu was the realization of it. The sword was said to be like a pair of eyes that washed over kings, judging their actions and reacting to their integrity. For whoever it was that possessed it, flourished if they were an honorable person or fell into ruin if their actions were deplorable. Unfortunately, the fate of this sword is now lost through history, as the last accounts of its whereabouts placed it in the tomb of King He Liu of Wu, yeah that guy again, whose son made sure the location of the tomb and its treasures would remain a secret by killing the workers who worked on his father's final resting place. Hundreds of years later, Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of the Qing dynasty, even looked for He Li's tomb, hoping to find the swords buried with the ancient king. They were, however, unsuccessful in locating the tomb, but the hole that was made in their excavation filled up with water and over the years became known as the Sword Pond, located in present-day Suzhou. Number 5, the Sword of Gou Jian. Like most legendary swords, this too is associated with a monarch, particularly King Gou Jian of Yue, who was a famous 
Taoist ruler during the spring and autumn period of China. Because this was a time of constant military conflict, it led to the manufacturing of the highest quality of weapons that would give soldiers an advantage in battle and the sword of Goujian was one of these weapons. The story of its namesake, King Goujian, is famous throughout Chinese history. The state of Yue was in a long drawn out struggle with the state of Wu, with the rulers of each state hating each other's guts and are each other's arch nemesis. However, Goujian would be defeated and even captured in a battle with Wu. Although Goujian was not killed, he was made to serve King Fu Chai, successor of his rival King He Lu. After three years of hardship and disgrace, Goujian was allowed to go back to ruling his kingdom, but he never forgot the humiliation of his defeat and servitude. As soon as he got back home, he started plotting against Fu Chai, weakening his state from the inside. He bit his time and a decade later, he led his army to a series of victories against Wu, leading Fu Chai to eventually killing himself. 2,500 years later, doing an archaeological survey in the Zhang River Reservoir, the sword of Goujian was found inside a tomb together with the remains of a human body. What was amazing about the discovery of the bronze sword was that after a millennia since its use, it doesn't have a single sign of oxidization or tarnish. Researchers believe that even though the tomb it was found in was soaked in water, its airtight scabbard and high concentration of copper preserved it in an unbelievably mint condition. After a long debate as to the inscription on the blade, it was later confirmed that it was in fact King Goujian of Yue's sword. Like his master, the sword suffered destructive forces and survived untarnished. So there you go, those are five legendary swords that have become an important part of Chinese history. Though only some have been found again, all of their stories have withstood the test of time and will forever remain in the history books as a great reminder of the rich culture and history of China. And I really wanted to do this video because obviously I love Chinese culture, I love Chinese history, I love swords. I've been wanting to be a ninja since the age of six, but hopefully you found those legends and stories really interesting. All right, thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll see you later.